Hello, my name is Aydin Abadi from UCL. In this talk, I'm going to briefly present our paper called Multi-Party Updatable Delegated Private Set Intersection. It's a joint work with Stephen Murdoch from UCL, Chang Yudong from Newcastle University, and Sotirius Terzis from University of Strathclyde. First, I'm going to give a brief background on the private set intersection, or PSI for short. A PSI is a cryptographic protocol. Broadly speaking, a PSI lets parties share their data in a privacy-preserving manner. Specifically, a PSI lets different parties, each of which has a private set, compute the intersection of their private sets such that nothing about the set's elements beyond the result is revealed. Let's look at an example in which Alice has a set containing 1, 2, 3 and Bob has a set containing 1, 3, 4, 5 and 9. According to the PSI's definition, Alice must not be able to learn Bob's set elements that are not in the intersection. So she must not be able to learn 4, 5, and 9. Also, Bob must not be able to learn 2. In general, there are two types of adversaries. Passive or semi-honest, active or malicious. The focus of this work is on the semi-honest adversarial type. A PSI is usually an interactive protocol, meaning that parties interact with each other over multiple rounds. A PSI design can be complicated when efficiency matters as well. PSI protocols can be classified into two broad categories. Traditional PSI, delegated PSI. In the traditional PSI protocols, set owners store their sets locally. Every time they need to compute the intersection, they interact directly with each other. However, in the delegated PSI, the data owners or clients can use a remote server like cloud computing. They can delegate the storage of sets and or the computation to the server. The delegated PSI protocols can be further classified into two categories. Those that support one-off delegation and those that support repeated delegation. The delegated PSI protocols that support one-off delegation requires the data owners to encode their set elements locally each time the PSI computation is needed. But those that support repeated delegations allow the data owners to reuse their outsourced data for every PSI computation. So set owners in this category do not need to keep a local copy of the sets or to download and re-encode them every time they need to compute the intersection. The focus of this work is on the latter category, i.e. PSIs that support repeated delegation. Some PSI protocols can support only two clients, and some of them can support more than two clients. The PSI protocols that support more than two clients are usually called multi-party or multi-client PSI. Note that in the multi-client PSI, the participants only must learn the last result, the intersection of all sets. Nothing about any information about the, even the intersection of pair of sets should be 
revealed to the participant. PSI protocols have been used in many research projects, such as detecting cheaters in online games, solutions for contact tracing, and very recently in the Apple solution to combat child sexual abuse material. In this work, we wanted to design a PSI that imposes low overheads, supports repeated delegation, allows data owners or clients to efficiently update their private outsourced data in a privacy preserving manner. Here, update is defined as an element insertion or deletion. Also, we wanted a PSI that supports multiple clients. To meet these aforementioned properties, we have proposed a protocol called FEATHER. It is the first multi-party delegated PSI that lets a client efficiently update its outsourced sets by accessing only a tiny fraction of its sets. We have also implemented FEDER. The source code is publicly available. We have used various tools to construct FEDER. The main tools we used include set random functions and permutations, hash tables, bloom filter, Horner's method, resettable counters, one-time paths, polynomial representation of sets, and permutation map. As you can see, to achieve efficiency, we have used various tools. Next, I'm going to give a, an overview of the three main standard tools we used in FEDER. The first one is a polynomial representation of sets. Let's assume we have a set S. We can represent this set by a polynomial as follows. For each set element SI, we construct a single polynomial X minus SI. Then we compute the product of all these single polynomials. This results in a new polynomial P. So the polynomial P represents the set S because these polynomials roots are the set elements. Anyone who has access to this polynomial can find the set elements by extracting the roots of this polynomial. Now I'm going to briefly talk about hash tables. A hash table is a data structure. It is an array of bins where each bin holds a set of elements. A hash table usually comes with a hash function. We can insert a fixed number of elements into a hash table. To insert an element into a hash table, we first compute the element's hash value and then store the element in the bin whose index is the element's hash value. In PSI protocols, we often use a hash table to split a large set of elements into a smaller parts or bins. In this way, we can run the computation that is needed to find the intersection on each bin which has a smaller size than the size of the actual set. This technique can lead to significant improvement in some of the PSI's performance. Bloom filter is another data structure commonly used in PSI protocols. It allows us to efficiently check an element's membership. A bloom filter is an array of bits 
a bloom filter comes with k hash functions to insert an element into a bloom filter we first compute all hash values of the element this gives us a collection of indexes then in the bloom filter we set the corresponding bits in that indexes to one now i'm going to briefly explain how we constructed the feather there are three phases involved in feather setup update and psi computation phases in the setup phase each client independently encodes and partitions its set elements and then uploads the result to the server after that, the client can delete the local copy of the set. In the update phase, a client inserts or deletes an element to or from its outsourced set. For a client to update its outsourced set, it sends a short message to the server and asks the server to send a small portion of the set to it. When the client receives that portion, it locally updates it, then encodes that portion and sends the encoded portion to the server. In the PSI computation phase, a collection of clients get together and ask the server to run the PSI computation on their outsource set and send the result to a certain client, one of the clients. To authorize the computation, each client sends a message to the server and to the client who is supposed to receive the result. As this flowchart indicates, in the setup phase, each client prepares and updates its set locally and uploads it to the cloud server without the need to interact with other clients. In the update phase, the middle uh, flowchart, a client sends only a single message to the server and receives two vectors which is the content of a single bin in the hash file hash table the client after updating the two vectors sends them to the server that replaces the bin's content with the new one in the psi computation phase the last diagram each client who is interested in the results, i.e. client B, sends a message to all other clients. If they agree to participate in the protocol, each of them sends a message to client B and to the server. Then the server uses these messages and their outsource data to compute the intersection in an encoded format and sends the result to client B. Finally, client B uses the message it received from the server and other clients to decode the results and extract the intersection. Now I'm going to briefly explain the setup phase. In step one, each client maps its set elements to a hash table. In step two, it inserts the set elements of each bin into a bloom filter and then masks each bloom filter. Note that in Feather, the PSI computation is run on the hash table's content 
not the bloom filter the bloom filter is used to allow a client to distinguish actual elements of its set from errors later on during the PSI computation. In step 3, the client encodes the content of each bin as follows. First, it represents the element of each bin as a polynomial. Then computes the y coordinates of each polynomial. And after that, it blinds each y coordinate with a fresh pseudorandom value. In step 4, it allocates a unique pseudorandom label denoted by L to each bin and then permutes the bins and labels. Note that each bin contains a masked bloom filter as well. After the permutation, there will be no link between a bin's index and a pair of bin and its label. So after the permutation, no one can tell the original index of a bin without knowing the permutation's key. The client sends the permuted hash table and labels to the server. Let's have a closer look at the update phase. Let's assume a client wants to insert element A3 into its outsource set. First, the client uses A3 to determine to which bin this element belongs. This results in an index of a bin. Then it uses the bin's index to generate the bin's label. It sends the label to the server and asks the server to send the content of that bin tagged with that label. The server sends that bin to the client. Then the client locally updates the content of that bin re-encodes it using fresh blinding factors and sends an updated bin to the server which overwrites the old bin's content with a new one. Therefore, to update, only one bin is retrieved and updated. The PSI computation phase is more involved. Therefore, I only outline two key challenges that we needed to overcome to design the feather for this phase. In the setup phase, different clients encrypt using one time path their own polynomials under different keys because they do not interact with each other in the setup phase. Also, the hash tables of different clients have been permuted under different keys. We needed to find a way to let the server compute the correct intersection in this situation. To address this challenge, we used switching technique and permutation mapping. The switching technique allows the server to obliviously switch the blinding factors of clients to the one used by the result recipient client. The permutation mapping is a map that tells the server how to combine 
the permuted bins of clients without leaking anything about the original order of the bins. As you can see in this example, given the permutation mapping, the server knows that it needs to combine the second bin of client B with the first bin of client A and with Gth bin of client C. The same holds for the rest of the bins. Please recall that in the update phase, a bin's content is masked with fresh blinding factors and these factors are renewed every time the bin is updated. The client needs to know and regenerate these factors in both the update and PSI computation phases. The question is how can a client regenerate the most recent blinding factor using only a single key? To answer this question, we use resetable counters. Each counter is kept locally by the client and keeps track of the number of times a bin is updated. A client can use a combination of a single key and counter to regenerate the most recent blinding factors. Now I'm going to briefly discuss Feather's costs. In terms of asymptotic costs, the communication and computation cost of Feather is linear with the total number of clients in the PSI computation phase. The communication cost of the update phase in Feather is linear with the size of a single bin. The computation cost of the update phase in Feather is quadratic with the size of a single bin, which is much lower than the state-of-the-art delegated PSI protocols because their update costs are linear with the cardinality of the entire set. As I have already mentioned, we have implemented the feather and analyzed its concrete cost. In the two-party setting, the feather's cost of updates on a set of 1 million elements is over 1000 times faster than the fastest delegated PSI. Also, its computation cost in the PSI computation phase is over two times faster than the fastest delegated PSI. It only takes 4.7 seconds to run PSI with 1000 clients where each client has 1000 elements in Feather. As this table indicates, the updates runtime in Feather remains the same for all set sizes. For instance, when a set element is 60 bit long, then the update in Feather takes only 35 milliseconds for all set sizes. Also, the Feather's communication cost during the PSI computation is relatively low when an element is 40 or 60 bit long. For instance, when there are 10 clients where each client has a set of 1 million elements, then the total communication cost of the result recipient is only about 1,244 mega Bytes. However, such a cost gradually grows with the number of clients. The table also shows that Feather records 
further improvement to handle a very large number of clients who have sets of very large size. As this table indicates, Feather can very well handle a large number of clients when each client has a set of thousand elements. For instance, when there are 16,000 clients, each of which has a set of a thousand elements, then it would take only about five minutes to compute the intersection of the sets. To wrap up, in this work, I presented Feather, a lightweight, multi-party, updatable, delegated PSI. It is the first PSI of its kind. We have analyzed Feather's costs. Our cost analysis indicates that the scheme is indeed efficient. We have made its source code publicly available. This is a joint work with Steven Murdoch, Chang Yudong, and Sotirius Tersis. Thanks for listening.